What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. I am emotional about this video. I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm... I guess I'm just excited and nervous. Mainly excited though because I'm finally getting going on my Subaru engine. As a lot of you know, I have a 98 Impreza with an H6 EG33 in it. And from the beginning of time when I started this build, I guess not at the beginning of time, the beginning of this build, which is like five years ago now, I have dreamed about having a built engine. That has been the ultimate goal for this car. Yes, I wanted to get it looking good, but my ultimate goal was to have this be a powerhouse. And I knew I could only achieve that with a built engine. So I am building my engine. This is something that I've always wanted, even at a young age. I knew that I always wanted to have a Subaru with a built engine. Did I know it was going to be a six cylinder engine? No, I did not. Even before I went to school and learned how to work on cars, I still knew that I was going to build an engine someday just because I wanted to learn. And I knew that if I always paid someone else to do it, that would never happen. The reason I'm so scared is because I have thousands of dollars wrapped up in this engine already, probably close to 5,000. And if I mess up on anything, then it could cost me a lot of money. So there's been parts of me that I'm like, hey, why not just let a shop do this that knows exactly what they're doing? But if you do that, you will never learn and become a better person, be become a better person, a better mechanic. If you want to do something, you do it yourself. That is how you learn. Don't be scared to fail. So this is me not, not being scared to fail. There's a possibility that things could go wrong, but hey, guess what? If it does, I'll take it apart and I'll say, okay, I did that wrong and I'll learn and I'll adjust and I'll fix it. So with that being said, let's come over here. I have the crankshaft and let's get going. So here we have my crankshaft. As you know, I have gotten my machine work done. Actually for the crankshaft, it's been at a couple places. First of all, it was taken to M45 in Auburn, California. They are a super specialty shop and that is where I got it polished. They, I believe they ground the insides inside of the lobes to make room for the manly bearings since they are wider than stock they have to be ground in the middle to make room for that but because they are not used to working on an eg33 the h6 engines they were not able to balance it so i took it to a shop closer to me and they balanced it everything is balanced for these rods and the pistons i have which are the cp pistons that way it's an improvement from stock. It To me, it was kind of silly to go through all this work and not have it balanced. Why not take that one extra step, a couple hundred dollars, to have everything right that way when I want to, add some RPM, it can handle it better. This is a rotational mass. Every time you have a rotational mass, you want it to be as balanced as possible. So, got everything balanced and ready to go. So, and then, as you guys have known from previous video, if not, I have Manly H-Tough rods here. I got these from gripweldgarage.com. They're an awesome shop out of Colorado. I like them because even though these EG33s aren't a huge market for shops, they are still putting forth the effort to put out parts for them. So that is awesome for a company to do. And then as you can see, I am running the ACL race bearings for my um, rod bearings. Also got the AP, ARP uh, fastener lubrication. That way when you are torquing things down, this will help everything be torqued down to a more consistent and more consistency than you are going to be with using just standard oil. Then of course we have our engine lube so I've already measured the bearings 
the bearing clearance for these two. Um, these are my one and two. And so I will be putting them on. I have the block or the crankshaft cleaned good. And when you're when you're cleaning, make sure to clean out your oil galleys. I don't know if you call them galleys on the crankshaft, oil ports, whatever. Because if it's a used crankshaft, there was at one point oil flowing through these, and you never know what that oil condition was in. So there could be residue of some kind in there. So clean those out the best you can, especially main bearing, the main bearings of one, three, five, and seven, because they supply oil to the connecting rod. You don't want to starve that. That is a big problem for Subarus. So make sure you clean all that good. So I think I'm ready to put these rods on and get started. All right, first one done. When you're torquing these, it calls for 60 foot-pounds. I like to do it in stages, so once you get it snug on both sides, I like to do 20, torque them to 20, then 40, and then 60. That way you're evenly distributing the, I guess, torqueness. <laughs> that way um, it's not possible for one side to get torqued weird and then the other side to bind funny. That way they're getting evenly distributed. So I'm going to throw on this second one.
All right, two done, four to go. Um, the other four have not been measured for clearances, so I'm gonna have to do that. I'll show you guys how, but I'll probably do that another day because it's getting late and I need to go in and go to bed. All right, it's the next day, guys, and we're gonna be continuing on installing these rods on the crankshaft. So these two went pretty fast because I already had the clearances done and we're just pretty much ready to throw on. But the last four, I have not yet done the bearing clearances yet. So I'll go through that with you guys. In order to do this correctly, you're gonna need a micrometer and a bore gauge and of course a torque wrench and all that. So let's head over to the vise and we can start getting the clearances. All right, so here we have the rod in the vise and the bearings installed. I am using I'm using standard size bearings with but I also have a standard X bearing set as well. That way I can miss mix match them in order to get the clearances I want. Um, I'm not going to tell you the clearances to do. I am going for 2000s for my build. And so I'm looking to get So my clearances are a little higher than OEM specific due to the power I'm running. So when you do this, you're going to be trying to simulate how it's going to be inside installed in the car. So you're going to be torquing this to the 60 foot pounds, just like you would be installing it on the crankshaft. So now that we have everything torqued down to spec, this is where the measuring comes in. You're going to take your micrometer and measure the journal on the crankshaft. If you don't know how to do that, then you probably shouldn't be building your engine. So, But this is very important that you have the right measurement for the crankshaft journal because that is what you're going to be taking your measurements off of. So let's head over to the other vise with the bore gauge and show you how to do that. Now this is the tricky part of the whole operation. We know that this is the perfect diameter of the crankshaft journal. And so here you stick your bore gauge into this, this micrometer and you zero out the bore gauge up here. You know, I can do this without. So you zero it out here. So you turn the dial so that the gauge is at the zero. I'm going to do it real fast off camera and get back. The needle is zeroed out. So that tells me that when the needle is at zero, it is the perfect diameter of the distance of the journal. Go over to my bearings. And you'll be putting the journal or the bore gauge inside here. If you look here, I am at about one and a half thousandths. Oh. So I'm at one and a half thousandths, which is not where I want to be, but what I know that I have a standard and a standard X bearing inside here. The standard X is for more clearance so that I know that if I swap out the normal standard one for another standard X, it'll bring me up another half a thou and that will give me my two thousandths clearance. So we are done measuring and we can put this on. All right, have this all on. So I'm just gonna do the last three and knock them out off camera. And just like that, all of the connecting rods are on the crankshaft. Everything moves good, smooth, no binding, which is all a good sign. So, that is ready to drop into 
the short block. I will be doing that next, but I'm going to be ending this video here because I don't want to get, I don't want videos to get too long just because I know these videos might have a lot of information, so a lot of talking in them. So I don't want to just put out a super long video of me just talking. So I'm going to break this engine build into multiple videos. That way I can put out some information, which I enjoy doing as well as get the engine done. So, well guys, this is where I'm going to end this one. Everything went together smoothly. Um, before I go, I'm going to leave you with a few things to watch for while you're putting things together. First of all, double check your crankshaft to make sure it's within spec on, in every aspect. That way you don't get to assembling and all of a sudden, hey, this isn't going to work and you're going to have to backtrack and spend more money. And then pick out the bearings you want for your application and pick out the clearances you want for your application. Every build is different and everyone has different goals, so there's not really uh, one size fits all for this. So do your, do your research and pick out your clearances and then make sure you do the right torque spec for whatever you're using. Um, everything's going to be different depending on manufacturer and the bolt you use. AR, ARP 2000 bolts are going to be different than the ARP 625 Plus. Um, so make sure you, you torque correctly and just take your time. Do it right. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you that keep up with my builds and are somewhat invested in them. Makes me feel good and it makes me want to do better content. So thank you all. And if you haven't yet, subscribe so you can keep up and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.